take me along, and I will help you. Yes. Hayden closed her eyes, and the tendrils snaked into her mouth, her ears, her eyes. It was the briefest moment of discomfort, followed by utter silence, darkness, and the most glorious sensation of peace. When she opened her eyes, Hayden found herself back on the main road. She blinked for a moment, regaining her bearings, then remembered that she needed to get to school. Oh man, I wonder how late I'm gonna be. She started to jog. You'll help me with Miss Thompson, right? Liana? Are you still in there? Hey, Hayden! I didn't realize this was a race. <laughs> Slow down a sec. Hayden turned to see Alex walking briskly up the street towards her. Alex and Hayden were in the same ecology class, and a couple years ago had played on the soccer team together. I noticed Miss Thompson paired us up for the parasitology project. You want to get together this weekend to work on it? Um, yeah, sure. Maybe Sunday? Works for me. Are you going to the movies tonight? <laughs> I haven't really decided yet. It might feel strange, since I'm not on the soccer team. Mm. What if they don't want me there? Ugh, I sound so stupid. Alex studied Hayden's face as Hayden looked at the sidewalk. I understand. I felt the same way after I dropped basketball, but they still treat me like a part of the team. The schedule was just too much for me. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry to be dumping all this on you. Ecology project, right? Sunday? See you in class and we'll talk more. Right. See you there. Hayden rushed off to her first period class. Alex watched her go for a moment, and then turned and headed towards his algebra classroom. Not all parasites are animals, though. Parasitic plants derive their nutritional requirement from another living plant. They have modified roots that penetrate the host plant, allowing them to extract water and nutrients from the host. Some parasitic plants are able to locate their host plants by detecting chemicals in the air or soil given off by the host. Miss Thompson droned on as the members of the class listened, to varying degrees, some diligently taking notes, others doodling in their notebooks. One senior boy was nodding off in the back row. Now, not all parasitic plants are able to remain attached to a host. Some hosts are able to defend themselves by blocking the flow of nutrients to the parasite. Class, read pages 99 to 127 over the weekend, and I expect your projects to be done by the end of next week. Miss Thompson yelled over the din of scattering students. Hayden? Hayden, packing her backpack, looked up slowly. She'd been dreading this moment for so long, but felt emboldened by the presence of her new ally. Can I speak with you for a bit? I'm not alone anymore. I can do this, Hayden thought. She straightened up, took a deep breath, walked straight to the front of the classroom, and sat down in the chair Miss Thompson motioned to. Mr. Gallagher told me you're planning to take a gap year next year. Hayden nodded. The two sat in silence. Hayden knew Miss Thompson expected her to speak, but she could think of nothing to say that would please her teacher. Liana, now would be a good time, Hayden thought, her confidence faltering. What do I say? <laughs> Hayden, you've worked so hard this past year. If you take a gap year, all that will go down the drain. Trust me, if you do this, everything you've worked for will be thrown away in an instant. Hayden could think of no defense. Even Mr. Gallagher, her guidance counselor, had frowned at the idea of a gap year. Where was her new friend? She started to panic. I just don't feel ready, Miss Thompson. Liana, help me! Well, that's the whole point. To challenge yourself. Make sure you are ready for the real world. In real life, you only get what you earn. 
You take what's thrown at you and you deal with it. No hall passes to get out of work. You're a brilliant girl, but I've always felt you needed to toughen up. And this proves it. <sighs> what is it? Uh, hi, Miss Thompson. Hayden actually promised us to come out after class. And if that's okay with you, can we hang out with her now? Miss Thompson said nothing, but motioned Hayden towards the door, looking very perturbed. Hayden grabbed her things and headed out of the classroom, not making eye contact. She's right, you know. You have so much potential. You really should use it sometimes. Hayden stopped suddenly. What? What was that all about? Jess asked once they were alone. I thought Miss Thompson said something. But <laughs> that's weird. I guess. Well, you're welcome for saving you from Thompson. Talk to you later. I gotta get to practice. Yeah, thanks. Later. Smile, Hayden. It's the weekend! Hayden shrugged. Jess gave her a quick hug. You'll be fine. Talk to you soon. As Jess took off towards the fields, Hayden watched her go, then turned slowly in a circle, looking for any sign of Liana. She saw nothing but the ever too familiar sights of the school and of the town buildings and streets. Where are you? She walked home slowly, knowing she had some time before the call. Most of her friends were at soccer practice. She kept her eyes peeled as she watched for any sign of the side street that led to the forest, but saw nothing like she'd seen that morning. Did I imagine it all? She thought about her conversation with Miss Thompson, and about the voice she'd heard. Thought she'd heard? The more she thought about it, the more convinced she became that none of it had been real. Of course, I mean, this is me we're talking about. The one who totally flips out any time anything goes wrong. The one who can't handle anything. It's not surprising that I'm also apparently delusional. She flung open the front door and headed straight upstairs, feeling relieved that her father was still at work. When it was time, she pulled her chair to her desk and sat down with her laptop. Hayden, finally, we were about to give up on you. Sorry. I got sidetracked by Thompson on the way home. I saved her. You're welcome. Yup, she did. Thanks again. Okay, so the movies. What time do we need to be there? Well, I told Jason we'd meet up with them. Wait, what? Jason Miller? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Didn't you know? God, guys, should I just go by myself so you don't embarrass me? Sorry. So yeah, we're going to meet them there at 8. You all in? I am. Yep. Hayden? <laughs> Hayden, are you still on? Yeah, I'm still here. I just... They don't want you there. Hayden, we've been planning this for weeks. You should stay home. Hayden, everything okay? I'm sorry, guys. It's not that I don't want to. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> I know. I'm the worst. Oh, girl. It's important to accept the truth. Hayden, come on. So what? You had a bad day. Just get over it and come with us. Gabby's right. You should come with us. It might make you feel better. You are the worst. I... They can see it. I just... Everyone can. Selfish girl. To ruin it for everyone else. I can't. Oh, what? Are you, like, scared to leave your house? That's so lame. <laughs> Gabby, that was Gabby. nice. Apologize. What? I can't. Why are you so stubborn? I'm done trying. It's helpless. Goodbye, loser. Logging off to call. I can't do this anymore. Oh, Hayden, come on. No, wait. Gabby didn't mean it. Don't hang, Don't up. hang up. Come to with us. us. Sorry, guys. I gotta go. I promise. I'll talk to you later. Promise? Promise. Okay. Hope you feel better. Take care. Aiden slammed her laptop shut and burst into tears. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> she stood up, knocking over her chair behind her. She paced around her room in agitation, clutching at and shaking her head. 
No one wants you around. Stop it! You're a disappointment to your father. Please! To your teachers. Just go away! Even your so-called friends. I can't even think with you inside my head. You promised to help me, but instead, you're making my life a living hell! Hayden felt suddenly very dizzy. Her vision blurred, and she reached out, trying to steady herself. She felt the rough bark of a large tree beneath her fingers and grabbed onto it. Her vision cleared, and she found herself back in the forest. The sky darkened, though she saw no clouds. A strong, warm wind blew from behind her, whisking strands of her hair into her face. She pushed them aside and turned to see Liana, sitting on a nearby branch, licking their fingers greedily. Liana? Liana had changed. Their face looked round and rosy, their skin smooth and plump. They jumped nimbly down from the branch, their red-gold hair bouncing in waves tossed by the wind. Suddenly, they lunged at Hayden and grabbed her around the waist, pulling her so close she could feel their cheek brush her own. Mm. The tendrils began to engulf Hayden again, but they were no longer soft and comforting. Instead, they felt rough and spiky, clinging to her with their burrs and brambles, squeezing her limbs, crushing her torso, choking and suffocating, and she hadn't the will to resist. So hopeless. So desperate. I smelled your despair from miles away. I tasted your tears. And they are ambrosia. I have helped you, you worthless creature. I've given you a purpose, you pathetic, delectable girl. You will feed me, you broken, luscious wretch, because that's all you'll ever be good for. Because I'm your master!